Hello everyone, Hybrid here, and in this video I will show you how to DPS Mythic Mithrax as a Frost DK. So a few things just for setting up your Azerite traits and talents. I recommend running Syndragos as Fury or Frostworm's Fury. And if you're progressing this fight, then I recommend running Primar single target Azerite traits. But if you're looking to parse on this fight, then I recommend running one of the Remorseless Winter traits. And if you're doing this in patch 8.1, then maybe one of the Frost Whelp traits. Um, I, this video was recorded one week prior to patch 8.1, so I didn't have access to the trade quite yet. So right as we jump into this fight, uh, you want to pre-pot about one third of the way down when you're falling, and this will pretty much depend on when the first person jumped in. And then you just want to build up your runic power um, as, and wait for the first add to spawn. About a second before it spawns, you can pop all your cooldowns and ju just make sure you're positioned in a place where you can cleave both the boss and the adds with it. And I typically tend to use my cold heart on the ad just to get rid of it a little bit quicker. And then uh, cooldown management on this fight will be very heavily influenced by if you're progressing this or if you're parsing on this. So if you're progging this, I definitely recommend using Frostworm's Fury on that first ad because that will help you raid out a tremendous amount. However, if you're looking to uh, farm this and you're looking at parsing on this fight, then you should save that Frostworm's Fury for the intermission phase and you'll see that later. So my second pillar of Frost, again, I had it up for quite a while now, about 20 seconds, but I actually sit on it until this ad spawns. And this is because I only get two pillar of Frost in this first phase, no matter how well I do this, and even if I press it on cooldown, uh, that would mean that I wouldn't have it in the intermission phase for that first add. So the way it works out, it depends on your DPS, but if you are able to get three Pillar of Frost, then you should just use them on cooldown. However, if you push the boss uh, kind of quickly, more closely to the time that we push here, then you should definitely save the Pillar of Frost for the second add. From there, I position myself at the front part of the boss here, in the direction that he will be running when he's transitioning, just so I don't lose any uptime on him. And you can see again here, I have a P Pillar of Frost back up, but I am sitting on it because I know that this ad will spawn, and I want to get as much damage out of this as I can. So I will be using it to basically cleave and pad on those small ads as much as possible. So I pop my Empowered Rune weapon, my Breath of Syndragosa with Pillar of Frost to ramp up the damage benefit from it. I use my Remorseless Winter before the adds come down, so I get that instant Howling Blast proc whenever they appear, and then just go ahead and use Frostman's Fury on them right before they die. So you can see that it is a huge burst and huge amount of damage overall if you execute that correctly. One thing that I could have done a little bit better is save up one FB proc uh, right before the adds, that way I can Howling Blast them twice. So basically what I do here is again jump up on the rock and see there I used one proc, then I used Remorseless and Winter and used the second proc on them. And then ends up getting a third proc right as the ad got dragged onto them, so I got a huge amount of cleave on all of the adds. Now one thing that probably your guild and most guilds do is set a lock gate here that you can just take to take you to the top of the stone. However, as a melee DPS, I don't believe that that's very beneficial because you're essentially losing downtime. You lock gating will be a lot faster than that ad being dragged with you. So I recommend just moving with the ad and just use like that's advance or something um, or just stay a little bit ahead of the beam and that will allow you to keep uptime on the ad as you move over to the rock. Now again, with Pillar of Frost, we always save it for high damage and damage checkpoints of this fight. Uh, so I always save my Pillar of Frost for adds that spawn or parts of the fight where there's a lot of small adds and I am able to cleave multiple targets. And you will probably notice this, notice this throughout the fight. So another little trick that you can do with AMS, especially during Breath of Sindragosa, is whenever the ad is up, he will cast a spell called Void Echoes. And if you AMS the Void Echoes cast, you will get a significant amount of runic power into your Breath of Sindragosa, so that will just extend it quite a bit. Now here I actually end up getting the debuff, but the place I choose to run out is basically behind the ad. So as soon as it spawns, I can press my Breath of Sindragosa and be cleaving the boss and the ad with that without really having to use my movement spells to get around. 
And one thing that on, I did in this fight, which looking back at it, I don't quite agree with. I was tr trying to test out um, how my damage was if I was using Remorseless Winter to cleave two targets versus if I wasn't. But we just actually ended up one-shotting this. So this fight you will see that I don't use Remorseless Winter on two targets at all. But I definitely recommend using it because it is a little bit of a damage difference. Um, and you you gain a little bit of damage by cleaving those two targets with Remorseless Winter. So here again I will be using Pillar of Frost on this add. And you see that we have two pretty bad orbs uh, which makes moving around everything here a little bit more difficult. Now one thing that I should have done is pop this Pillar of Frost a lot sooner. So I'm able to ramp up that strength uh, benefit from it. So by the time I use my Frostworm's Fury and get those double Howling Blasts in on the adds, it's ramped to maximum potential. Uh, instead, I popped it right before the ad spawn, which means that I only get essentially the base potential from the strength boost. So again, we get the second add here, and I try to get one Howling Blast on it, or just to hit it. I actually end up slipping off the rock here. Um, I was trying to just inch forward there to hit the add. So again, here I do the same thing. I Howling Blast the add, I Remorseless Winter, I Howling Blast the add. And then we actually tend to tank this add right outside of the beam range, where we can still cleave onto the adds with it. So you will see that my cursor is actually hovered over the adds. And all of those Howling Blast procs that I get, or Rhyme procs, I will be using on the adds because that is a lot more damage overall. But again, going back to it, if you're progressing this, you should be looking at getting effective damage out instead of just get, getting overall damage out. So here, this is the last ad that we will be killing. So I have all of my cooldowns for it and I use my second potion at this spot in the fight. And again, I'm just positioning to cleave the boss and the ad as the best I can. And from here on, it's basically just press my buttons until the boss dies because there's not much else going on. So as you can see, we had three deaths. Um, one person got res, but we still have two dead. So this will affect our overall fight time and will kind of draw out the fight to that almost eight minute mark, um, which is a tad bit slow for how fast we've been killing the boss in the past. So this will affect my overall damage a little bit, but you can see that the effective damage throughout the fight was quite high. So a few things um, as far as strategies on this fight goes, there's a new strategy where you essentially ignore the second add in each of the main phases. And this is because when the boss transitions to the intermission phase, that add will simply disappear. So if you use that strategy, your cooldown usage will be completely different than if you were just going with the regular strategy that I'm showing you in this video. But other than that, there's not that many variations. Like I said, again, if you're progressing this, then you should be looking at using your big damage cooldowns on targets that are that actually pose as a DPS check, like those small as uh, the two ads that spawn in the main phases, rather than saving them for the intermission phases, where the small ads will just get cleaned up anyway, and they don't really pose as much of a problem. But that was the fight overall. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Again, if you liked the video, please hit the like button and sub to the channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.